Robo Papa. Hey YouTubers, Robo Papa here. Uh, today's episode, I'm going to talk to you about uh, transceiver, um, particularly the NRF twenty four zero L plus. Um, that's uh, this little guy over here. Um, it's a very nice module that basically can receive and transceive uh, data and it's a 2.4 uh, gigahertz and it's compatible with the, the Arduino uh, got only uh, six pins um, two of them are the ground and the uh, uh, power and I was thinking that what I can do is create actually um, a joystick module that will um, send the data to the Arduino um, and then the Arduino will run a certain uh, robot um, so here's what we're going to do this uh, episode uh, we're actually going to use um, I don't know if you can see that so I'll try to zoom in a little bit but we're going to use um, two uh, transceivers one to transmit and the other one is to receive it um, we will use two joysticks so we'll have the, the up, down, left, right, and then the push button as well. Um, we'll use the Adafruit uh, Pro think, uh, Trinket for the um, transmitting the data. And then we will use the Uno to basically receive the data. And in order for us to drive any module, uh, we'll actually use the um, Adafruit uh, Motor Shield and to power it up, we'll use two, ba two packs of 12 volt um, nickel metal uh, battery packs. And what we're going to use to drive is basically this thing, which is basically six wheels. Each one has its own motor. It's got a lot of uh, storage space, especially over here inside for the battery or the, the Uno with the shields, as well as on the top plenty of holes to mount stuff and it basically has suspicion and it should go on the field so maybe we'll be able to take it outside for a test run when we're done but the reason I wanted to have two joysticks the reason I want to have two joysticks is for this little guy and this little guy it's not just that he can move the, the belts it also has the option to move this one up and down and then it can go through like obstacles like stairs and stuff like that so I might actually add some sensors to this and according to the sensor depending on the joystick it might actually do certain things we'll see how far we can go with that but that's basically the plan um, here's some uh, schematics of how we we're going to do that so we will have the joysticks the two of them the left and right one and then we will have the trinket right over here with the, the, um, the um, RF module that send the data to the, the motor itself, the uh, vehicle itself, with the UNO and the receiver itself, like over here. And then it will control and it will be the brain over here. So the idea is that each joystick will actually have three spots, the up and down, which will be 0 to 1024 because it's just a potentiometer, the left and right, which is also 0 to 1024, and then the button, which will be true or false, because it's just a push button, a regular push button. So we'll start with uh, designing the, the control pad, and we'll print like a, a case for it, and we'll see how it goes. So let's get started. Okay, so here's what I got so far. Um, what we see over here is the RF module. Uh, right over here and we have the Adafruit uh, the Pro Trinket and we have the two joysticks I'll explain what this is in a minute the um, RF itself is connected to um, let me try to zoom in over here so the RF itself is connected to the, the pins um, 9 to 13 which is right over here um, and it's connected like all the wires over here um, 
so all the uh, miso and um, the clock and um, the cheap enable and all that they're connected from 9 to 13 which is over here and um, the trinket itself gives you a 5 volt output this is a 5 volt uh, trinket they have also the 3.3 but this one is the 5 volt so what I had to do is to route the 5 volt um, through a LM317 um, which is basically a regulator that I put uh, the resistors and capacitor over here uh, that way I can lower it from from the 6 volts that I know that will give it as a battery to a 3.3 volt and the reason that I needed for 3.3 um, because the RF itself is a 3.3 volt um, operational so if you push a 5 volt on this it will actually break and you will fry it so I had to do that conversion and that's what this little area is over here that way I can reduce the 5 volt to a 3.3 volts um, the joysticks themselves um, we have if you think about it we have actually um, left and right up and down but the left and right is for one um, analog input and then the up and down is one analog input but because we have two of them I had to have four analogs inputs and those are connected um, right over here in this area um, and then we had to do two digital ones for the clicks so the I connected a 10k resistor um, as a pull down resistors um, and then I push a common ground that's connected over here um, to everything so this is all the big mess of the wiring and connecting everything together so next is we will connect a USB to the trinket we'll flush it with the program that basically reads the input of the joysticks including the push buttons and send that to an Adreno Uno on, on, uh, on, with another module, RF module and that module will basically output the, um, what, what it got and then we can see that it's working and move to the next level or the next step all right, so let's go to the, the, the code and review that all right, so let's go over the code um, and we'll have two file bases one for the transmitter and one for the receiver I'm basing my code base um, on the code from this URL, which I built on on top of it. Um, and it's the example in this page is using um, just a joystick example. So you can see that we um, setting up the the chip enable and chip select on pin number nine and ten, and then I defining it right over here. Um, don't forget that the RF24L01 is actually a 3.3 volt, not a 5 volt, um, just like it says over here. Even though the pens themselves are 5 volt tolerant, the VCC is actually 3.3. Uh, it's requiring the SPI, and I'm using a library, which I'll post a link in the description, for the RF24, which uh, makes it easy to send and receive packages. So like I said, I'm defining the pin number 9 and 10 for the chip enable and chip select. Then I define four analog for the joysticks X and Y, and then for the left and X and Y for the right. And because they have a push button also, then I'm defining um, a digital pins for the right and the left uh, push buttons. The, um, the module itself, the Wi-Fi module, the um, it requires a pipe and you will see this pipe also within the um, receiver not just the transmission um, part of the library you are just declaring it as a radio with the chip enable and chip select then I defining a, an array of six integers those will be the the four analog outputs and then just zero one for the buttons uh, that way we don't need um, special array to send through the packages. 
the setup is uh, fairly simple. We're just opening um, the uh, the radio and like beginning it and setting up the buttons as input. Um, and then we're just reading the analog and digital values, putting them in the right array, and then just writing it. And that's all it is for the um, transmitting, um, reading the values and sending it. So let's go to the receiver, which is a little bit more interesting. Um, I'm using the Adafruit. Um, sorry, this is the wrong one. I'm using the Adafruit Shield uh, motor shield um, to run a four DC motors, and I'll show you an example in in a couple of minutes of after we go through this code of how it actually works. So that's basically um, this, um, including, which requires also the wire that H. Uh, similar thing as the previous, the, the transmission, um, we need the RF module um, as well. And here's the, the pipe value, like in the previous um, code. Once again, the chip enable and chip select are in pin 9 and 10. And I'm just defining over here. Um, if you think about it, this is the index on the array that we're getting back. So left, right, left. So if I'm moving right or left, the value will be in, in index 0. Up and down will be in the index 1, etc. That way I don't need to remember exactly which index is what. I'm just going to define them over here. Creating the radio, just like the previous code. Creating the array of the joysticks, just like previous code. And over here, I'm just creating the shield from the motor shield, uh, the Adafruit motor shield, and set up uh, the four DC motors. I think that in the final code, this actually will change, and I'll use the left joystick for a set of three wheels, um, if we're looking at the tank, and then the right um, joystick for the right side. That way, I can actually turn, make a, a 360 degrees, or turning in place. Um, just by moving the joysticks to do opposite directions. The setup is fairly simple, just beginning, and uh, this is just for debugging. The start radio function is just a small function that does the, um, this. It basically said to begin, opening radio pipe, sending one pipe and the pipe value, and start listening. Um, <clears throat> the loop itself is we're just checking to see if there's a radio available. If it's not, it's just going to output to the serial that there's no radio available, and then it will continue on. If there is a radio available, we're trying to make sure that um, we're not done, and the done will be true if it cannot read anything from the radio itself, which means if I disconnected the, um, the, transmi the, tr the transmitter, then the radio will not be um, available over here and the done will be true. Otherwise, we'll just read those six values and I'll set up which direction I want to run and what speed. And I'll do that for the four DC motors. And I do that by, cre I created those two functions, the get motor direction and get motor speed. And all, all it's required is the value from the, um, analog stick or the pod the joystick itself so let's go and see what this get motor direction and get motor speed is actually doing and the get motor direction so we if we think about it the forward it, um, and we have forward and we have backwards the center point of the pod or the joystick actually has the value 512 which means that if i'm higher than 512 that means i want to move forward if I'm less than 512, that means I want to move backwards. Um, and that will be true for left and right as well. So I'm just checking to see if the the value that I passed here, um, regardless of which motor it is, uh, which DC motor it is, if it's greater than 512, then I'll basically return forward. If not, if it's less than 512, then I'll return backwards. The get speed motor is all I do over here is I'm checking to see if the speed, the motor value itself is less than 512, which means I'm trying to move backwards. 
Um, so the, as I'm going towards the zero, that means I want to get higher and higher. While forward, as I'm going towards the 1024, I want the speed to increase as well. So what I did over here is if the speed is actually backwards, I'm mapping it in a reverse order. So the 512 will still mean minimum 512. And if I'm zero, I want to get to 1024. That way I can just do one hole for the map like this for either backwards or forward. Because now I'm mapping the 512 to 512, zero will be 1024, which is similar to the forward. And that way I can just, um, I can just do something like that. The DC motor speed from the Adafruit, um, library is go from zero, which is stop. That's why it's 512 to 255, which is full capacity. That's why it's 1024. So let's go now and, and I'll show you the example of this code and see how it works. So here we have the setup for um, the modules. Um, we have the, the joystick module with a RF um, radio over here. Um, and we, go, we went through um, all of that and we looked at the code that basically will do um, what, what we're going to see over here. So each joystick uh, we'll have two motors, um, the one controlling the left and right, and then the other one control ups and down. And this one will be for the right um, joystick, and this section will be for the left joystick. So let me just move a little bit, um, zoom out, that way you can see. And I'm just powering um, the Adreno with a 12 volt uh, pack over here. So we'll start with the left and right on the right module. Oops, sorry. It's this one. So you can see as I'm moving it to the right, it's moving, and depending on the speed, it's controlling it. And then I can do it to the left. Or if I want to do up and down, And the same thing will be with this one. Oops. Uh, down and then up. And then this one will be the left and right. And there's some noise right now from the module itself and all the motors, but um, I'll try to solve that. So the next step I think will be, what I'm thinking is that the module itself of the, uh, each joystick will control one side of, of uh, the tires or the wheels. So we have three uh, with that tank that we saw on the left and three on the right. So each one will control uh, that set. The way it can actually move um, and rotate in place. Um, and that basically will be depending on the code, so how the code that you're writing on the tank itself. But as far as the module itself, it will always send that six values of the joystick. So right now I'm going to build a case for this module, that way we can actually hold it as a remote control. That way also we can wire it and connect to it um, from a battery, not a USB. Um, and then we'll put everything together. All right, guys, this is uh, all the time we have for today. Um, next time, what we'll do, we'll put all the components together and we'll connect the uh, joystick and the Arduino to the, the robot itself and we'll take it outside for a test drive. So stay tuned until next time and don't forget to subscribe.